Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of radar systems. Today's topic is introduction to radar. This is the introductory video where I will be telling you about the radar, what is the function of radar, what are various applications of radar, what is the frequency band which is used for the radar and some of the important terms which we are going to discuss over here. Let us begin. To start with, you must remember that radar, this is a short form of radio detection and ranging. The function of radar that lies into this particular term, radio detection and ranging. So radar is being extensively used for gathering various information about the different different types of objects and this is done by transmitting electromagnetic signals towards the object and just by analyzing the received echo. So radar is an electromagnetic system which is used for the detection and location of object means the location of the object is being identified at the same time the nature of object can also be determined. Detection refers to whether the target is present or not and the nature of target may be stationary or moving depending upon uh, in which particular manner the target is moving it may be moving towards the source it may be moving away from the source so various natures of objects or targets may also be available and here the term which is ranging it refers to the distance between the radar and target. So whenever we are talking about the range, it means that is the difference between or the distance between the radar and the target. And this radar, this was evolved just before the uh, World War II. Simultaneously in uh, Great Britain, US, Germany, France and this radar is the who has given the birth of the microwave technologies. And radar can see through the conditions like even in the case of the darkness, haze, fog, rain and snow which are actually not a feasible conditions where a human can see through. So radar can operate under various such unavoidable conditions also in the case of the unfavorable situations or weather conditions also. And the first radar that was worked at a very low frequency that was approximately 60 megahertz and that was only because of the lack of the sufficient uh, like powerful transmitting tubes and the development of modern radar it was started in year 1940 with cavity magnetron. Now let us understand the basic principle of radar. So you can draw the diagram by understanding what are the important components. So any radar system it consists of four major components. Those components are transmitter, receiver, antenna and the display device. So these are four important components and in case of the radar a single antenna can be used for both transmitting and receiving the signal. So for using single antenna there is a use of device which is known as a duplexer. And as you are aware now that the radar is used for detecting the objects and finding their location. So let us draw a very simplified diagram. You can see over here transmitter, receiver, these two things have been shown over here. So let us understand what is the function of the transmitter. Here the transmitter, it actually provides the RF signal of a sufficient power which is required to send via the antenna. So you can see here is one antenna and this antenna is being connected with the transmitter as well as with the receiver also. So duplexer is a device which is used whenever there is a use of single antenna for the transmission and reception. So during transmission this duplexer connects the antenna with the transmitter and there will be an open circuit for the receiver while during the rece reception or during the receiving operation this duplexer connects the antenna with the receiver. So what happened in this case when we are talking about the transmitter the antenna radiates the RF signal which is actually into the form of the pulses into space in a particular direction or you can say in a 
desired direction so it transmits the signal into the space now what will happen the signal this propagates in the space and some of the signal is intercepted by reflecting bodies let us say there is a target so some of the signal is reflected by this which is which may be moving or stationary so now this reflected signal this is being collected by the receiving antenna and the strength of this received signal this is very low this is also known as a reflected signal or a echo signal so this received signal because this is very weak it and there is a requirement to amplify it and then detect it then final operation is being done so what happened when target reflects some of the energy it is being received by the antenna now during the receiver portion receiver operation this antenna will be connected with the receiver section and this received signal will be processed will be amplified and then target detection and information extraction can be done so this is how basic operation you can understand for the radar and here you can see the distance between the radar and the target that is known as a range to the target and this is denoted by r sometimes you may find out two different terms for the radar means two basic radar systems you may understand or you may find at some places one is monostatic radar and second is bistatic radar so monostatic radar is actually the radars which uses same antenna for the transmission and reception and what is the bistatic radar it uses two different antennas one for the transmission and other for the reception so you may find these two terms but in most of the cases we will be talking about a single antenna which is used means we are talking about the monostatic radar systems now let us understand some of the important terms which are related which we are going to find in the radar system first is the range what do you understand by the range see range is the distance between the radar and the target and this is usually denoted by r so you can write down the formula as well let us say the time taken for the signal to travel from radar to target and back to radar is t means signal is traveling from radar to target and then again from target to the radar if this is the time t and the distance between the radar and target is r and here you can see r is the distance while traveling from radar to target and again r is the distance from traveling back it means the total distance covered is what that is 2r so now you can write down the range to a target this range is what 2r which is equal to c into tr tr is nothing but this is the time required or you can write it as a t also which i have mentioned over here so from here you can write down what is r this is c into t by 2 so this is the formula which you can use for calculating the range and here c c is the velocity or the speed of the light which is nothing but you must remember c is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second so by putting the value you can calculate it the range of the radar can be measured in kilometer in nautical miles or in some other units also second important term is the pulse repetition frequency see you can see here some of the pulses is being mentioned or the diagram is being shown over here and you must understand the duration between the two clock pulse its selection is very important this particular duration must be selected in such a way that the echo signal which is corresponding to the present clock pulse it must be received before the next clock pulse see when we are transmitting first clock pulse then first we must be able to receive the echo of first pulse then only the second pulse must be transmitted so this particular duration must be selected accordingly 
When we are talking about the pulse repetition frequency means the number of radar pulses transmitted per second that is known as a pulse repetition frequency and the time interval between the successive clock pulse is known as a PRT. You can calculate pulse repetition frequency which is what 1 upon PRT. So this is how you must remember this formula also. Next is the maximum unambiguous range. What is this maximum unambiguous range? See in some of the cases as I have told you that the time between the pulses it must be selected very carefully but what happen in some of the cases if the time between the pulses is very short means first pulse is transmitted and the second pulse is transmitted if the time between the transmission in between these two pulses is very short then what will happen echo signal which is coming from a long range target that echo means the echo related to the first pulse it may arrive after the transmission of second pulse right when the second pulse is being transmitted so the echoes which arrive after the transmission of next pulse that is known as a second time around echoes or sometimes multiple time around echoes so what happen the range which is an important factor the range beyond which target appears as a second time around echo that is known as a maximum unambiguous range and the second time around echo I have already explained to you so what the formula you will be writing maximum unambiguous range that is what you can write C into TP upon 2 where this TP this is the pulse repetition period pulse repetition period or you can write down this formula as C upon 2 times FP and here what is FP? FP is pulse repetition frequency. So in this manner you can calculate the maximum unambiguous range. Next and important factor is the minimum range. See minimum range or sometimes you may find a term short range of the target these are the similar terms what happen sometimes if it has been identified that the target is very close to the transmitter so if the distance of the target from the transmitter that is very less so the echo which would be returned to the receiver that will arrive even before the even uh, before the completion of the transmission of first pulse itself see what happen when you are transmitting first pulse echo must be received after the transmission of first pulse and before the transmission of second but if the target is very close to the transmitter what will happen even after the first pulse transmission is not finished but we are going to receive the echo so what will happen in this particular case the target is not going to be detected means it is not going to decide what is the range so this is actually the minimum usable range for the target and it can be calculated as means this is exactly one half of the distance of the signal can travel during the time which it takes to transmit the pulse so our minimum it can be calculated by the formula C which is the speed of light into pulse width upon which is actually the same as the shortest range. Next, now let us talk about the applications of radar. There are various applications of radar and basically it has been categorized mainly into three categories like applications for civilian, applications for military and applications for scientific uh, purpose. Here I have listed down some of the important application. First is application of radar for military see radar is a very important part of the air defense system so what happens in case of the air defense system it performs the functions of surveillance navigation and for the purpose of guiding the weapons also second is air traffic control radar is used a lot for the purpose of safety of controlling air traffic routes and even in the vicinity of the airports as well see 
in the case of the aircraft and ground vehicle traffic uh, if we talk about a large airports then a number of like vehicles will be moving here and there so they are used to monitor by a high resolution radars so radars has been used with ground control approach to guide aircrafts for safety landing even in the bad weather condition so this is how it is commonly used in the air traffic control next is the aircraft safety see some of low flying military aircrafts they actually rely on what they actually rely on terrain avoidance and terrain following radars are used uh, to avoid collision with the other obstructions like high terrain military aircrafts it also employ ground mapping radars to find a image a screen so this is how it is used mainly in the aircraft safety in the case of ship safety also see when the ship is moving in a ocean then radar used to give a warning about the potential collisions or about the presence of other ships even in the case of the poor visibility condition also next is the navigation so a number of navigation applications moving from one place to the another place on ground on air on water it is used next important application is the space see space vehicles used to have radar for what for landing on moon and some of the largest ground based radars which are used for the detection and tracking of satellite see how useful radar is for the space next is the remote sensing see all the radars are actually remote sensors which are used for sensing a geophysical objects so all radars are the type of the remote sensors but sometimes radar has been used extensively for getting the information about the weather condition remote sensing radars they are also concerned with earth resources like ice coverage agriculture forestry conditions and other the uh, related to the environmental pollution also so in this manner these are the various applications of the radar which i have listed over here and discussed as next let us talk about the radar frequencies see radar frequencies when you are talking about the conventional radar operates in uhf and microwave ranges it usually starts from 100 megahertz to 36 gigahertz but nowadays radar operates as frequencies uh, like at low frequency also of a few megahertz see millimeter wave so these radars are experimentally used here in this particular table i have listed out some of the bands their nominal frequency range and the specified frequency range which are used for the radar like if we talk about the vhf nominal frequency range is from 300 to 1000 megahertz but the frequency which is used for the radar application that is from 420 to 450 megahertz 850 to 942 megahertz similarly you can see in the case of the l band nominal range is from 1 to 2 gigahertz and the specified frequency is 1215 to 1400 megahertz similarly i have been listed out for s band c band ku band and k band so you can see out of that allocated nominal frequency range which is used for the specific purpose of the radar thank you so much for watching this video